Five star copies all, go ahead. Message to observer, Alpha, three rounds, AT delay in effect, three guns. Bravo, two rounds, two guns, smoke on effect. Hey y'all, it's Options Millionaire. Part 3 of the educational series that I promised was going to be coming out in May and June. And then man, am I excited for this one. This one is all about the Greeks. The Greeks. The Greeks are something that everyone talks about. It's the, the term is tossed around a lot. It's thrown around in Reddit forums and discords and YouTube videos and explained. But do... Most people, most beginners, don't really know what the Greeks are. They don't know how they're manipulated. They don't know how they change with price action or volatility or events. So they don't really understand how the, basically the market changes them. So if they don't understand how they change, how they change and how they interact, then how could you possibly pick an accurate option? And that's what this video is really going to explain. Uh, sure, you can go on Google and type in these Greeks. You can get the book definition of everything. I'm going to try not to stuff book definitions down your face because, frankly, I'm not going to insult you like that. Anybody can, with a high school degree or anybody, even, you know, middle school degree, can, can Google these terms and read what they say. And, uh, you know, that's not fun. And, you know, that's not practical because you need, you want to know what these mean, not read it off some stupid screen. So, uh, yeah, so this is my intent. I'm going to dive in here and we're going to get into the essence of what this stuff is. Now, do you know, do you, do you need to know these Greeks inside and out in order to trade options? No, not necessarily. However, if you want to maximize your profit, if you want to increase your win rate, put yourself in the absolute best position to make money every single time, then you absolutely do need to know these Greeks. This is the, knowing the Greeks is what's going to separate you from a trader with a 55 or 60% win rate at best, if you're lucky, to a 70, 80, 90% win rate all the time, if you're smart about your entry positions, your, your positions, your entries, and your exits. Knowing your Greeks is the number one risk mitigation factor when choosing the right contract. It's what's gonna make you choose a bad contract over a good contract. Or, as some traders, and what we'll talk about later, what some traders may come to frustratingly know, is that you can be right in selecting a call on, on, on an underlying price. The price goes for you, it goes in your direction that you want, and you still lose money. And people have asked me all the time, how is that even possible? Like, this is the most frustrating thing in the world. Why did I buy a call, the price went up, and I still lost money? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you. And I promise you, learning the Greeks here is not going to be as hard as you learned it in high school. Hey, but dumb chicken. So the first one of those Greeks that we're going to talk about is called Delta. Ooh, sounds fancy. I promise you, it's not fancy. It's not that hard. You can actually do all of these Greek calculations with nothing more than a middle school education. I promise you. Now, the Delta is very important. It's actually one of the most important ones, and it's paramount in developing a system on which you could plant your footing and in, uh, in executing an option that's going to maximize your profits and it's going to be in conjunction with your current level of, of risk, your, your assumed level of risk. It's what you, what you like to trade. Uh, and my tolerance for risk is about in the middle. I like to call myself my tolerance for risk is about in the middle. Some people are a little more, some people are less, and you can use Delta to figure that out. Now, the book, the book definition of Delta is, for every $1 move in underlying strike price, the premium will increase by the amount of the Delta. So... Let's just take this May 21st, 419 calls right here. The delta is 0.31. So what this means, if SPY were to go to 417.19 right there, this premium, $1.23, would increase by 0.31, which is a 25.2% gain. See, not that hard, is it? Now, yeah, sure, it's not that hard to learn the definition of it, but how do you apply that information? Oh, this is how you determine where you want to plant your footing in your strikes and where you want to put, uh, where you want to actually buy these options. So you can kind of look at this and do a little analytics to figure out the volatility and the risk. So 419.31, that leads you a 25% gain. If you were to do the same thing and come down here for a 418, it's going to be 22% gain. For a 417, it would be a 20% gain. 416 is right here. It's an 18% gain, and then we're actually going in the money with a 415. That's a 16.45% gain. So the further in the money you go, the less percentage gain you get. 
Now, you may ask yourself, hey, but OM, the further in the money you go, the higher your delta. Wouldn't that yield you a greater price, a greater yield per dollar? Yeah, you would be right, but you're not taking into consideration the increasing premiums price. So the, in the prices are increasing as well, the deeper in the money you go, as well as the delta. So that's going to yield a smaller percentage return. If you go way up here to 402 in the money, you're only going to get like a 6% return per dollar moving to strike price. Still great. I'll take 1%, 6% all day. But these down here, the one we just calculated is getting 25%. Now, on the flip side of that, you're also increasing your risk the further outside of the money you go. So you also you can incur a 25% loss if the price would go against you $1. So you do need to take that consideration now. So that is that is Delta. Nothing too crazy, nothing too hard, uh, but very, very crucial nonetheless. And of course, a lot of people ask me, hey, OM, why did you decide on the 2 to $3 strike price? Uh, that is exactly why. Uh, because it, it gave me the fluctuation in price that I wanted per dollar of movement uh, that, that, I, that allow me to basically maintain my risk without freaking out every time the price goes down or without being stopped out too much. So now that we've got Delta out of the way, I want to talk about Gamma. Gamma sounds spookier than Delta, but I promise you it's simple. All these are very simple. Once they're explained, just hang in there, and I promise you you'll be an expert in no time. So what is Gamma? Well, let's recap on Delta real quick. Remember when we said that uh, what Delta is is for every $1 stock, $1 change in the underlying price, the premiums will increase by the Delta. So if this goes to 417 this call right here will increase by 0.31 cents. Okay, so what is gamma? What does that have to do with gamma? Gamma is the same equation except different variables. Gamma is 0 0.0553 is for every $1 in stock price, the delta will change by this much. So instead of the stock price, the delta will change by 0 0.05. So this is this way you can continue to calculate your gains going forward. If you want to calculate a $4 gain in price, you can do so with the gamma and the delta together to get you a more accurate representation of what your profits will be. So, if this price, if the if the stock price were to go to 417.19, this price, the underlying price would go to 1.5, I'm sorry, the, the premiums would go to 1.54 because you're increasing up by 0.31, but then your delta at that time would be 0.31. 0.36 and change because you're adding this to this the delta if you were if this were to go up to another two dollars you would add this again and so on and so forth increasing a good visualization of what the gamma actually is is that you, you could look at delta as the speed of a car and gamma is going to be the acceleration the rate at which this that car gets to that speed just a little vis visualization to think of Next up is the third one on the list, but yet definitely not the third most important one on the list. It's one that eats in our craw constantly as options investors. It's our worst enemy. It affects us not only in our personal lives, but in the options trading world every second of every day, day in and day out. It's relentless, and it is theta. Theta sucks so bad because it's father time. It's father time. It's relentless. It never stops. It'll. It's always behind you. It doesn't matter how fast you run away from it. It's always there, creeping, breathing in your ear, whispering sweet nothings, uh, taking your mom out to a steak dinner, and then never calling her again. Arguably the most important Greek in consideration when options investing because it's decay. It decays your option into the ground nonstop. That's why it's so important to choose right when choosing your in, in choosing your premiums, choosing your contracts. Which one are you going to choose? It's so and so important. So, having said all that, what is theta defined? Theta is the rate at which the options premium, right here, will decay in one day, given that the underlying stock price will stay relatively constant. So, meaning, if we buy this contract right here, and this tomorrow this price stays roughly the same throughout the day. When you wake up tomorrow morning and check your stock price and, and SPY is sitting at 416.19 at, at open, that your premium that you purchased for 123 today, tomorrow, will be worth less, 
0.2956. It'll be the, that much less, which is a 24% loss. All things independent of each other. Just talking about theta. You're down that much the next day if that price stock price doesn't move. That is called father time, time decay. You can call it time decay. You can call it theta, whatever it is you want. Uh, it's relentless, and that is what makes our job so hard at options investing. You will notice that theta, uh, as opposed to delta and gamma, theta is is expressed as a negative number both on the call side and the put side. So be aware of that when you are looking through these charts. So the last in the list we're going to be talking about today is Vega. It's last, it's certainly not least, and the reason why is because Vega is the source of a lot of unexplained heartache, confusion, dismay, and horror when an options investor buys a call, the stock price goes up, and yet they still lose money. When they're right, but they still lose money. It's because they're not doing their homework, and they're buying something they absolutely should not be in case in point. The family-friendly, everybody-loves GameStop. This crap that happened back in the springtime is a prime example of why you need to be paying attention to Vega and thusly implied volatility. Now, having said all that, what is the definition of Vega? The definition of Vega, and we'll use the 419s we've been looking at, the definition of Vega right here is for every... 1% change in implied volatility right here, the options premium will increase by or decrease by the Vega right here, 1543. So if this were to go to 15.63%, the premium of 123124 will increase by 0.1543 and vice versa. When this goes down to 13, this will decrease by 1543. Great. So what does that mean to you? Well, I can't really tell you what that means to you until we explain what implied volatility is. I know, I know, I know. But OM, options and vo implied volatility is not, is not a Greek. I know, you're correct. But guess what? You can't understand Vega, which is a Greek, unless you know about implied volatility. So what is implied volatility? Implied volatility is the market's forecast. This is the book definition. I'm reading verbatim out of the book. Implied, vol implied volatility is the market's forecast of a likely movement in a securities price implied volatility is very very high when you're going into an unknown event when that event goes from unknown to known you'll have a rapid decay in implied volatility otherwise known as an iv crush iv crush goes down tremendously because it's called an iv crush vega wipes out your position it destroys your position stocks that have very, very high, I'm sorry, options premiums that have very, very high implied volatility have high premiums. So they're already priced high. So these are high when you've got a high implied volatility. Now, what is high? I think a standard across the industry is about 100%. If you'd seen that 100%, for me, that's even too long. 75% is extremely high for me. 100% is out there. Anything beyond 100, you're insane if you even think about buying uh, that, that premium, in my opinion course y'all know my tolerance for risk but the prime example of this was GameStop our friendly neighborhood properly evaluated well-priced GameStop I say that tongue-in-cheek so back in the heyday of GameStop in what January and February when it was skyrocketing to moon levels I think applied volatility at one point was 463 percent well what happens when you got a 460 463 percent IV and you have a massive IV crest that drops 100 percent what happens? Then take 100, because if 463 drops to 363, take 100% and multiply times your Vega, and that's how much your premiums decay. And that's, that's an extreme, extreme example. But that's a good indication that even if the stock price stays relatively flat, IV dumps, the premiums drop, <clears throat> and then the price starts to increase again, you have so much ground to make up that you're going to lose money. You're, not, you're never going to be able to make up that ground. You're going to be in a losing, losing position because you just got crushed with IV. Vega wiped out your position, and now here you are. The stock price is increasing. You bought a call, but you never can make up grounds. And one of the things I love about SPY, one of the many things I love about SPY, is that they always have very, very low implied volatility. It's always a low risk. 
So 14, 15, 16, 17, always in the ballpark, never more than that. So that's one of the, the amazing things that, that it pretty much takes Vega and applied volatility out of the equation just trading SPY. That's why I think it's awesome in terms of a technical standpoint to trade SPY as a beginner. Uh, just learn on this system that I have is just trading only SPY because of that. Now, you can answer a whole bunch of questions I'm not going to get into because it's for another video about the technicalities and, and reading about market sentiment with SPY, but that's another video altogether. But that's really why I love trading it because of Vega or the unplugged volatility is so low that Vega is usually not a factor in, in determining which SPY options you're going to buy. The fifth and final Greek is Rho. I'm not going to go over Greek, that Greek right now. I think the first four is something that you really need to focus on and understand in base. And right now, I'm just not going to worry about Rho. I want you to focus on those four, for first four. And then we'll talk about Rho in a later video. Anyways, that's all I got, y'all. I really hope you uh, you enjoyed this video. I tried to explain this video in ways that I would understand it when I first started trading options years ago. So try to keep it at a base level, not get too technical and use a bunch of jargon and try to impress you with a blah, blah, blah. So I just wanted to keep it nice and easy. I hope you learned this video. If you have any more questions, please shoot them into me in the Discord. Uh, you can DM me there or post them in any of the applicable rooms in our Discord room. If you're not in the Discord, please, please, please go over there. Join that Discord. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. Go in there. You can learn as much as you want. Go in there. There's plenty of resources, plenty of people, some people in there that are smarter than me that uh, you can learn from, learn how to do op some options trading. It's just a great overall community that is focused on learning, not about YOLOing or copying other people's plays. It's there for learning. So if you aren't there, please go there and uh, you, can, you can hit me up with any questions you want. If you're new to the YouTube channel, please like this video, subscribe, and of course share this channel. And then of course you can join us on Instagram at options.com millionaire you can also if you like support the patreon is completely voluntary uh, to support this community support the um movement so we can continue to grow prosper and help others who need to learn more about options properly so they can continue to make money not only now but for the rest of their lives that's all i got y'all i really hope you enjoyed this video be on the lookout for more educational videos coming out this month next month and the month after that the entire summer it's going to be awesome stuff i'm options millionaire thank you for taking time to watch this video I'm out.